Eyes in the Dark is a very fun and unique game in the roguelike genre. It's a twin stick shooter that has some very fun and addictive platforming involved. It was released on July 14th of 2022 on Steam and Epic Game Store. It was developed by Under the Stairs, who are a Croatian development team, which consists of seven people total, and Eyes in the Dark is their first game made. It was published by Gearbox Publishing, who have published a couple other games you may know, like Have a Nice Death and Risk of Rain 2. Really, there's not much to learn about the developers here. I gave you everything that I could find. So how about we talk about the story of the game? the mechanics of the game, the positives, the weapons, everything. Let's get into that. So here's the quick backstory of the game. It's set in England in 1922, and you play as Victoria Bloom, who's going to visit her grandfather, Victor Bloom, in the Bloom Manor. With your arrival, you notice your grandpa isn't around, and you discover the first enemies in the game, some dark-looking bugs. You go through a quick tutorial and find your grandpa being kidnapped by the darkness. Before he gets taken away, he throws you a pocket watch that travels you back in time to that very moment. Basically, every death, it resets you there. Don't worry, some stuff carries over like most roguelike games. That's basically the backstory so you understand what the heck is going on. You get the gist of it? Perfect. Let's talk about the ins and outs of a run next. The first two completed runs are rather short ones as the first run has you only fight three guardians, which are bosses, and the second run has you fight six guardians. I personally haven't won a third run yet as I've died on the 10th and I assume final boss a few times, but I'll get there soon. I promise. The first two runs are kind of like Binding of Isaac where you don't have the full content right away, but you get the gist of the game. The full run seems to have you go through nine areas in the Bloom Mansion, with each area ending with a guardian fight. Once the guardian is dead, you can go to the next area, but before every area, you you have to choose a perk and impediment that will last the rest of the run. They're always random, but some impediments are definitely better than others. Like enemies exploding? No thanks to that. Along with the perks and impediments, every area gives you an item. We'll talk about items and upgrades very soon, I promise. Now inside of each area is a bunch of different rooms, which kind of reminds me of Binding of Isaac as well. But each room you fight enemies, and those enemies will drop sparks, which are the in-game currency. They'll be talked about in the next section with weapons as well. Each area includes a store, challenge room for an item, and the guardian, and some areas have a few empty rooms. Now the only mandatory room you have to go in is the guardian room as that lets you go to the next area, but I would highly recommend fighting in every single room, as I swear later in the game more enemies will spawn and they'll be a little bit tougher to kill. So the better equipment you have, the better chance you have of winning. And that's basically the inside of an entire run. So now let's talk about the outside of a run. And let me tell you, it's not too much. Outside of a run, you have a bookshelf filled with three sections with the meta machine, items, and perks. The meta machine allows you to choose items and perks at the start of a run. And the items and perks section allow you to find the unlocked contents from those sections in a run. And you unlock all of these things with a currency called knowledge that you gain after every run. From what I've seen, there's three ways you get knowledge, which is killing a guardian, which which gives you three knowledge, collecting sparks, which gives you one knowledge for every 10 collected, and choosing knowledge as one of your perks after a guardian fight. And the shelf seems to be the only use for knowledge at the moment. Also on the death screen, it has a section called memories retrieved, but that doesn't unlock until after you've won your third run. That's when the game opens up even more, but it hasn't happened for me yet because I stink. But that's really all the ins and outs of a run. That's all the simple stuff. See, it was, it was easy. But now let's talk about the items and the weapons that you can find in a run and all the upgrades that you can do. This is where it gets pretty fun. Firstly, you have your flashlight, which is your main weapon. It can have different attachments on it that change the way the light attacks. Some will be a beam and some will shoot projectiles. Along with that, you have upgrades on it that improve the base stats like damage, range, and all that good stuff. Those upgrades have four different levels and the further you get into a run, the higher the levels you'll find, of course. You can also purchase more upgrade slots with sparks and it maxes out at five upgrade slots total. Your second weapon is a slingshot, which like your flashlight has different upgrades to change the weapon and improve stats basically the exact same thing except it's a slingshot and it's really fun to use and finally you have your own character as a whole yeah you can change your character a little bit but really you just upgrade your type of jump and improve your dash all these upgrades for items can be bought in the shop for sparks found in challenge rooms or just randomly be found in chest in a room there really isn't much to say about weapons i feel like i taught everything pretty well in that short amount of time there's only three weapons total and the upgrades are pretty simple to learn after a few hours, you'll probably have all the variations down and figure out what you like and what you don't like. Now, I certainly have. But really, now let's talk about the best thing. Positives of the game with my opinion. Yep, my opinion. The thing you definitely care about. Overall, the platforming feels very good and killing enemies is satisfying. And I feel the difficulty of enemies stacks pretty well for the later you get into a run, making the run still engaging towards the end. I love the variation of weapons as well. There's not a lot of weapons in the game, but trying to figure out what the best combo of attachments is, it's always a lot of fun in the new roguelike like this. I always say that roguelikes need good variety and difficulty enhancers for it to be a great game. And I'll talk about difficulty enhancers and the negative 
alternatives as I'm unsure about them right now. But overall, the variety in items, it's very nice for this type of game. Now, outside of gameplay, there's still a lot of positives to talk about. Personally, I love the graphics. I feel the art style fits the game perfectly. And on top of that, the music, oh my God, the music is amazing. The music sounds like something straight out of a Game Boy game, which fills me with nostalgia as I'm a 25 year old man who played Game Boy all day growing up. And all the music used in this video, yeah, it's from the game. It's incredibly well done. Okay, back to the graphics quickly as well. I really enjoy that the cutscenes in this game are a callback to the silent film era of the 1920s. Since this game is set in 1922, it's really a nice little touch that you don't see too often. But with all these positives, there's gonna be some negatives. And in reality, I don't have a lot of negative things to say about this game. My main concern is replayability after Act 3, and uh, if you want to avoid spoilers for After Act 3, go to this time in the video, you've been warned. But after Act 3, you need to go through the game again and gather your ancestors' memories. You have nine ancestor memories to gather, it can only gather one at a time, and this is where the difficulty enhancers come in, as each memory adds different effects onto the run. I'll be honest, I don't know what each one is, but from what it looks like, it doesn't let you stack the difficulty compared to a game like Hades. So I'm afraid it could get too easy or repetitive after some time, especially if you're a completionist. And personally, I would probably want to go for 100% in the game. And this final negative may sound crazy, but hear me out. This game is not in early access, and that kind of scares me because it doesn't seem like a super long game, and with it not being in early access, it makes me wonder if they will ever add any more content in terms of DLC. I assume bug fixes will happen, but what if those memories don't take too long to get and you crave more in terms of difficulty? Maybe it's me overlooking it, but those are my two giant negatives. The game has a few bugs and it crashed once, but overall it was a very satisfying experience and I look forward to playing the game more. Here's the actual biggest negative of this game. The publishers reached out to sponsor me to play the game and then when I emailed them back saying I would, they never responded. What the hell, man? I got rent to pay too? But I guess I can thank the Patreon subs for supporting via Patreon that helps me pay my rent. So thank you Patreon subs and thank you for watching the video. I'm only one guy and I stream like five days a week over on Twitch. So it's kind of hard to balance uploading and streaming all the time, but I'm doing my best. And I appreciate you watching and I'll see you next time. Maybe, I don't know.